Good morning. Welcome back to Chelsea Grows. It's a morning here at the garden. <laughs> so I came out this morning to kind of check on things. I, ha I didn't come out yesterday because it was thunderstorming and yeah, I had some schoolwork to do. I'm a teacher, so I don't have many mornings like this left. Um, but I like to come out in the morning and watch the birds. The birds are all out when it's kind of early and the bumblebees start coming out around 8 30 or 9 and they get busy and it's just really nice to watch the garden wake up. <sighs> but I got here this morning and it's I'm reminding myself to be patient with myself this morning. Um, we're our own worst critics and <sighs> I forgot the weed eater and there's weeds everywhere. <laughs> and the storm yesterday must have been really bad some of my sunflowers have fallen over and my umbrella was actually blown into the woods because we forgot to close it <laughs> so there's that and uh, it's been really wet and we're getting some leaf spot on our tomatoes so i'm just trying to remember that this is just par for the course this time of year and it doesn't mean I'm a bad gardener, even though it makes me feel a little bad. <laughs> but at this time, everything's growing so fast and, you know, the weather has an impact on what you're doing and it's not my fault, but I should have brought the weed eater. <laughs> so I'm going to sit here amongst my tomatoes and I'm going to drink some tea. I'm a tea drinker. So... Good morning. Welcome to Chelsea Grows. <laughs> so something I notice in a lot of the gardening Facebook pages and groups that I'm in, we can be really hard on ourselves as gardeners. This time of year, everything is huge. It's growing so fast. The weeds are growing fast. Your plants are growing fast. My melons are taking over my sweet potato patch. <sighs> it's just part of the season. And I'm going to be nice to myself. I only have a few days left with the garden in the morning. So, yeah. I have to garden while I can. <laughs> I garden during the school year, but I don't get to come out in the mornings like this. And usually on a Saturday morning in a community garden, it's kind of it's kind of busy, but on a weekday morning, it's really quiet and it's nice. And I have tea. <laughs> when it's winter, I have coffee, but I have tea. <sighs> Let's go garden. So you only catch this in the morning, but okra flowers are so pretty and the sky's about to open. You can see the bees already kind of getting excited about it. I'll see if I can stay out long enough to see them open, but any of the yellow spots are going to be new okra flowers. They're so pretty. So I realized that during my garden tour, I didn't show you our melon or sweet potato patch, so I'm going to show you that now. So here is the craziness that is our melon and sweet potato patch. This whole area here is sweet potatoes, and this whole area is watermelon. Now, I thought I planted cantaloupes, but they're watermelons. <laughs> oh no, look at that tree that fell down. Oh my goodness. You can see my really sad sunflowers that got blown over. I'm a little, little devastated about that, but I'm gonna plant some more. It'll be okay. <sighs> but there's maybe one, two, three, four, five, six big watermelons right here, maybe seven. And then in the back, I have small bush babies. So they're like small individual size watermelons that are in the back. And none of these are seedless. Seedless watermelons are a whole different monster. And I'll write a blog post about that. <sighs> they're not really a sustainable type of watermelon. So most of us home gardeners grow seeded watermelons because they're just easier. But these Alibaba's, holy moly. I wonder, okay, so this is my hand in comparison to this guy. So he's massive, and then so is that one. <sighs> I can't wait for these. They're almost ready. Someone told me, 
one of my good buddies here at the garden said that if you follow the stem and you find the first tendril, okay, when this tendril turns brown all the way down, you have about a week until you can harvest your watermelon. So I'm eagerly awaiting this little tendril to turn brown and die. And then this guy, this is the wrong side of his butt. This guy's tendril, let's see if I can find it. Okay, so his little tendril, it's almost brown all the way down. So he has another couple days and then I have like a week to harvest this guy. So I'm excited to try that. <sighs> Cantaloupes are a different story. Hit me up later. We'll talk about cantaloupes. Starting to get some blush on some of the heirlooms, which I'm super excited about. These are Cherokee purples and brandy wines. I think this is a Paul Robeson, maybe? I need to check. And then that's a Dr. Weiches down there at the end, which is going to be yellow, so I'm excited about him. And yeah, we're, we're getting a few, y'all. They're getting, they're getting there. Look at these guys. So this is a German Johnson. So good job, German Johnson. These are pretty big tomatoes too. Like this one's maybe at least a pound. But yeah, they're turning like some really pretty shades of pink. And then you can see the sunrise bumblebees in the background just being all yellow, ready for them to turn red. <sighs> all of this rain is not good for my tomatoes. I need to prune pretty heavily back here. But I haven't seen very many hornworms, so that's good. I haven't seen one today yet, so yay. And then, let's see, this is a brandy wine. So my brandy wines are almost there, I think. This is a big old tomato. Ah! Look at that guy, oh my goodness. That's a big, big fellow. Oh, everything has fallen over because of the rain. And then, this is my Dr. Weiches, and it's pretty yellow. It's getting there. I'm gonna wait for the shoulders to turn yellow, and then I'm gonna harvest this guy. And I noticed, not while I was shooting my video, but after, that my first beefsteak is almost ready. So he's got a little green on the shoulder, so I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer. And then, let me get through the tomato jungle that is this right now. So these are my black cherry tomatoes and honestly I've never grown these before so I wasn't sure if they were ready but if you take a tomato and you kind of lightly squeeze and it has some give to it it's usually ready so some of these guys are nice and soft and it looks like I've got my first black cherry tomatoes although I thought these were gonna be smaller not gonna lie these are some bigger sized cherries I don't know, they're like small little globes. But I'm gonna harvest these guys. So today I'm out in the garden and besides cleaning up damage from this rainstorm, I am trying to take account of all of the empty spaces that I have in the garden and kind of get an idea of what I'm going to pull out of the garden in the next couple of days. It's about time to start planting my second round of summer crops and start getting an idea for my fall garden. If you've never done this before, it's fine. We're gonna do this together. So there's a few things I wanna talk about. When I talk to people that are gardening for the first time, they usually tell me I bought all of these seeds and I'm so excited. And I've got onions and tomatoes and broccoli and lettuce and cucumbers and they're telling me all the seeds that they have and they're so excited and they're like, I'm gonna start them all this weekend. <laughs> and then I have to play this game where I go, mm, should I tell them? Maybe I should tell them. Oh my gosh. When you go to a box store, all of the seeds are out. It doesn't matter what season they're in or what season you're supposed to plant them in, but all of them are out. So you think naturally that no, they wouldn't put seeds out if they didn't want me to grow everything right now, but they totally do. <laughs> so they put all those seeds out and you're not supposed to plant them all at the same time. They're all different varieties of plants. Which brings me to some vocabulary today, guys. The first thing I want to talk about is your frost dates. Now, I'll explain what those are in a second. 
but frost dates are important because you have your first frost date. The first frost date is the day where you're going to get a first killing frost and that's the frost that gets on the leaves of your plants and kills some of your plants. Okay, so that's day number one you need to worry about. Then you have your last frost date. Your last frost date is in the spring and it's the last day is projected for you to have a killing frost. So, when you are buying seeds, you're gonna see a few terms. The first thing you're gonna see, I'm gonna put it on the screen, maybe right here. The first thing you're gonna see is frost tender. Okay, so frost tender plants cannot survive after your first frost. What happens is the frost will get on the leaves and then it will basically kill your plant because it can't handle the cold. Which is why you can't plant things that are frost tender in the middle of the winter. Okay, so someone asked, told me once that they were gonna plant tomatoes in January. Well, tomatoes are incredibly frost tender and it's way too cold and all of your tomato plants would never germinate and they would die. It would not work. Tomato plant, it will say plant after your last frost date. Okay, so your last frost will come and then you can put your tomato plants outside because it's safe. There won't be any more killing frosts outside in the spring and the summer, hopefully, that will kill your plants. Then you have plants that are called frost tolerant or frost hardy. These plants can survive in a frosty environment. Okay, so things like your brassicas, so that's broccoli, that's cauliflower, kale, cabbage, okay, those kinds of plants are actually frost tolerant and can grow in conditions that are kind of frosty. And those are good to plant in the fall. Big things to recap here. You have frost tolerant, which means they are good in a cold frosty condition. And then you have frost tender, which is not good in a cold frosty condition. A lot of your summer plants, like quote unquote summer plants, like cucumbers and tomatoes and peppers, they don't like frost. So they will die out once you get your first frost. So I'm going to show you my computer screen in just a second. And I'm gonna show you how we calculate our growing season and frost dates. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to Google first frost date wherever you live. I'm gardening outside of Atlanta in zone 7B near Beaufort, Georgia. So I'm going to type in Beaufort, Georgia first frost date. And that is this day. Okay. I like this. Like there's like nothing here, but then I'll edit it and there'll be something here. Okay. So then you're going to Google how many days until that date. That's how many days I have left in my growing season. So when you look at seed packets, they're going to say things like harvest in 60 days, harvest in 85 days, harvest in 40 days. So where I live, I have until November 9th until my first frost kills my frost tender plants. So that means I have 110 days left in my growing season. So I still have a while. Um, for those of you that live further up north, you probably won't have as long as I will because you get things like snow. We don't know what to do with snow down here. <laughs> um, so I have time to plant anything that will get to maturity in 110 days. So that's things like squash, cucumbers. I can do a completely new round of those and I actually will probably wait another week or two for the pests to kind of like die out before I'll plant those. Um, but that also means I have 110 days of warmth before it starts to get too cold for things to really get established. So I could go ahead and plant some kale. I could plant some Brussels sprouts. They have notoriously long growing seasons. Um, I'm not going to plant just yet. I'll probably plant maybe in about two weeks, but I am going to start some seeds indoors. Okay, so indoor seed starting is a whole nother video and I'll, I'll show you my setup eventually. I hope my garden neighbors don't show up because I'm sitting between my tomatoes like talking to myself. Yeah. So, let's go.
let's go garden. I'm gonna garden today. I need to um, pick some things. Enjoy the cool breeze this morning. It's actually, it's pretty nice, especially down here on the ground. Like it's cool and breezy. It's usually really hot. Enjoy the morning. It is lovely and it has just rained. So it's funny how things just explode with growth after a rain. If you, let me see if I can pan up to my tomato jungle. I think my cherry tomatoes probably grew like a foot and a half in like two or three days, it feels like, just because there was so much rain. Um, yeah, and we're starting to get some massive tomatoes out here. And just tons of cherry tomatoes. I love cherry tomatoes. My favorite thing to do is to make a pasta salad with cherry tomatoes and like some olive oil and some parmesan. So good. That's actually something I had in Italy a lot and uh, Italy knows what they're doing, people. Here's the camera. This is gonna make a great blooper reel. Humidity. I can't save you all the time. I need to quit talking about the plant.